Hey everyone, I want to talk a little bit about volatility and the potential for volatility in the equity market specifically to pick up here as we head into um, parts of July. Maybe it's more August-ish period, but just want to give you some perspective on that. First of all, I know there's some seasonality out there that certainly talks about um, the August through October period to be more volatile. Um, I wanna show you guys a couple of other ways of looking at this right now of how we could make an argument that maybe we will start to see volatility, some volatility, some return of volatility, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, it's not really our base case, but I want you guys to see a couple things that I think is gonna help you uh, and go a long way. So what we are going to look at first of all is this very simple chart, which has two simple lines. On the top, you have the S&P 500, and at the bottom, you have something called average true range. It's usually uh, the, the short uh, sort of name for it is ATR. Maybe you've heard of that before. And basically what this 14-day uh, average ATR is, is a 14-day measure. Basically what it's showing us is, is the average daily movement of the S&P 500 over the past 14 days. And it's, it's a little bit like, in fact, it's very much like looking at the VIX, except that the VIX prices in, uh, takes, is options pricing, so includes implied volatility uh, in the pricing, whereas this is the actual price movement of the S&P 500. This is, so this is what they call historical volatility, I guess is another way of putting at it. It's very similar to that. And you can say that volatility is getting very low. Now, what's most interesting about this, and you know, we've talked about this and we've been making a big deal to clients about this for the past uh, month and a half or so, is that if you zoom in even, I'm gonna zoom in a bit closer, not only has the, well, let's, let's start here, not only has the average true range certainly and obviously uh, continued to deteriorate since March of 2020, which was the, the bottom of the, the, pa the pandemic lows, in equities, but I want to get a bit more closer because there's an important point of how we might be able to measure uh, and, and sort of extract and evaluate what might happen going forward. So let me zoom in a bit closer. And specifically, what I want to focus on is the period in both price movement on the S&P on top and at the bottom as, as reflected with the average true range since early March. What happened in early March, and maybe you're not aware of this, but what happened in early March is when a lot of the uh, real alpha trade or even the beta trade where everything just rose together, reopening stocks, technology and other things really started uh, peaking out for so far for the year. I think they could go higher again, but that's where they stalled. So the real rally actually started to stall out in March, even though you wouldn't know it by looking at the S&P, which has continued to make call-down highs. That's largely due to the um, rotation within the market, but equally, maybe more importantly, so due to the very heavily, um, the, the strong weighing of you know big few stocks, mega cap stocks like Apple and so on and so forth, which have acted well for the past few weeks. So my way of looking at this right now is that if we are now at a fairly low point in average in, in volatility, and um, as expressed by the average true range, and the peak in March in ATR uh, for year to date so far um, was where the broader market, the sort of momentum trade topped. Um, I would suspect that even if we were to see a spike in volatility, it may be it may be more related to some of the names that have been more or less treading water or even outright going down quite a bit for the past couple of months, that they may start coming alive again. Now, um, we are certainly have we certainly have one thing that is is the the, the bigger problem uh, that we have to contend with or not the bigger problem just the bigger fact and that is and i'm going to get rid of this is interest rates and i am just going to bring up the 10-year yield of the u.s treasury note that's the the real word for it um and this is just a simple uh, candlestick chart but there is a huge debate, and that's largely what's also kept the market more or less going sideways. If you look, by the way, if you look at early March, remember that period I just talked about? In this case, it's mid March. Remember when ATR topped after shorting the SP 500? Well, guess what bond yields did in mid March? They topped 
for until at least so far year to date. So it's all the same trade. So I would think that if we were to see uh, yields start to go higher or, or, and or the average true range start to go higher, more movement in equities, um, doesn't have to be a crash in the market. It can be a move to the upside indeed. Uh, we, we could start to see that being a, a part of interest rates starting to go higher again. So we're in a bit of a wait and see mode right here. We've been for the past month and a half or so. Um, I think it'll become very clear when this next trade starts to work out. And again, you want to watch the ATR very closely because it is very closely correlated to its happening in 10 year yields. That's kind of the punchline here. So um, we will keep you updated on this, but this is really, really important. In my opinion, the most important thing to watch right now, if you're an equity investor, if you're a fixed income investor on the rate side, um, and, uh, and just for broader economic, uh, for the broader, you know, sort of economic backdrop, because again, yields are ultimately where that are going to indicate where things are going. So I hope this is helpful and we will see you in the next video.